Hello YouTube, this is the Radio Geek. Today I've got something a little different for you. I've got a uh, piece of equipment that I uh, recently uh, got. Um, occasionally when I build um, radio kits and things there'll be different components in there, um, capacitors in particular, and a lot of them are the old through, through hole style and uh, some of the smaller ceramic ones, the numbers on them are <laughs> They're kind of hard to read, at least for me they are. So I decided to get a, a, a cap meter uh, so I could check them uh, and see what values they were. And uh, I didn't want to spend um, a whole lot of money on it because it's something I'm probably only going to use a, a couple of times a year perhaps. And uh, so what I ended up with was the uh, one I found on Amazon. It's um, by General Instruments. It's the cap 1500 the CAP 1500 is the model number it, it comes in this little pouch um, it varies in price from $25 up to about $40 so not a lot of money um, it's fairly nice it's got a couple of small uh, alligator clip leads that go into the meter um, the meter itself it um, has a range on here from uh, 200 picofarads up to 20 um, microfarads so pretty pretty broad range you got a, a dial here for zeroing out uh, the display which is probably useful when you're trying to measure uh, smaller valued capacitors like in the picofarad range um, larger valued ones um, probably not that big of a deal but you can still um, zero it out um, it's a pretty good meter I mean it does the job uh, one complaint I guess I would say is there are right here where the meter plugs in just above that there's two little um, I guess like spring style um, connectors that you can poke a capacitor in like if I wanted to uh, check one of these guys here I could, um, instead of using the clip leads, I could just poke these uh, leads in there and, and measure it that way. The problem is that these spring clips are so tightly mashed together, you can't get anything in there. So if you get one of these, you're probably going to have to get a, a pocket knife or something, a little file, and stick it in there and just kind of twist it back and forth and spread those spread those apart just a little bit so that you can get the lead in there otherwise you try to push something in there and it just gets all bent up so I guess that's really the only uh, real complaint about that um, we'll see here I'll just turn it on and um, we'll we'll see here like uh, for instance I've got one here that um, oh it looks like it should be about hundred and fifty picofarads and if you're not sure what what it is you can all start off at the higher range and and dial it back down one important thing to do is um, not so much with these ceramic ones but with electrolytics um, capacitors can possibly have a charge on them you probably want to make sure that you short the leads together to make sure that there's no potential there on there before you um, check it with your meter otherwise you might do some damage to the meter if there's a high enough voltage there so let me see if I can get this guy in here and we're up to the uh, 200 microfarad range which is too high so let's turn it down to the 2000 picofarad range and it's supposed to be 150 and it looks like it gets uh, checks out here at a uh, 142 picofarad so that's that's pretty close um, I've got one here. It's supposed to be 220 picofarads. So we'll try this one. And it's 213 here. I'll I'll bring it in a little closer so you can you can see what we're seeing here. And then there's the range that I'm using. So that's uh, that's pretty much what it does um, you can also as an option you can use these test leads that are they're fairly short and that's important when you're um, 
measuring uh, capacitance because these leads will add capacitance um, to your measurement. Um, it's pretty much hovering around the zero range right now. I can kind of dial that in a little bit here. So now it's pretty much zeroed. And I'll put that in there. Actually, let me see if I can just move the camera in a little bit further. Let's try that. So you can see that it's pretty much zeroed in and I could take that um, same cap and I could just use these clip leads and and do the same thing. So you don't necessarily have to use those spring clips, but they are there and it's kind of nice to have them, but I would get 168 there on that particular one. So that's two ways that you can do that. Um, if you've got an electrolytic cap like this one is supposed to be 470 microfarads at 50 volts. So we'll try to get that in an appropriate range here. We'll put it at the 2000 microfarad range and and this has a polarity on it so i've already made sure there wasn't any potential on it and so you have to observe the polarity and making sure that you get the positive and the negative correct and it's supposed to be 450 and it looks like it's 489 490 so this just uh, gives you a rough indication of, um, you know, if the capacitor is any good, if it's uh, the right one. If you're building a kit, you know, make sure you get the right one. Um, like I say, this is an inexpensive meter. It was, you know, $25, $30. Um, I do have access to a more expensive uh, cap meter, and it's an Agilent 1701B. And it sells between $165 and $215. So you can see there's quite a difference in price range between these two particular meters. And at, what I did was I, I took some capacitors and I, I, I read them on the Agilent, which is the $165 or $215 meter versus the general uh, instrument cap meter, the cap 1500, which is between $25 and $40 on Amazon. And I just grabbed random capacitors and checked them and compared the readings that I got on both meters. And I'll just read them off to you what I got. Uh, I was checking a 47 microfarad capacitor. The Agilent said it was 47.5 microfarads. The General Instrument said it was uh, 48.1 microfarads. Measured a 220 microfarad cap. Agilent said 220.8. The general meter said it was 218 microfarads. Measured a 4.7 microfarad cap. Agilent said it was 4.704 microfarad. And the general instrument said it was 4.7 microfarad. Measured a 0.33 microfarad capacitor. Agilent said it was 0.32 microfarad. And the general said it was 0.32 microfarad also. Measured a 1 microfarad capacitor. The Agilent said it was 1.05. The General said it was 1.07. Measured a 0 0.01 microfarad. Agilent said it was 0 0.018 microfarad. The General said it was 0 0.016 microfarad. Measured a 4.7 microfarad capacitor. The Agilent said it was 4.682. The General said it was 4.64. Measured a 10 microfarad capacitor. The Agilent said 10.14. The General said 10.04. Measured a 0 0.001 microfarad. Agilent read 0 0.00131 microfarad. The General read 0 0.00108 microfarad. And the last cap I checked was a 330 picofarad. The Agilent read 354 picofarads. The general read 325 picofarads. So you can see there really hardly any difference there. I mean, granted, the, the Agilent is much more sophisticated and does a lot of other things 
but if you just need a cap meter to check some values and determine if something is good or bad um, the, this general meter is is pretty pretty darn accurate and good enough for for home use one other thing that these are good for to have around the house is if you have uh, central air or an air conditioning unit or any kind of electric motors like um, a well pump or something like that that uses a startup capacitor um, the startup capacitors can go bad and when they go bad your pump will not run and your pump might be perfectly fine it just needs a capacitor and the capacitor is you know like a $15 part you know versus <laughs> the price of uh, uh, replacing your motor um, so anyway, these caps are, or I'll bring one here, are pretty, pretty large physically in size. And this particular one, they all have, they're all uh, AC uh, capacitors and they'll have a range on them. Uh, this one says 124 to 149 microfarad is what this one says. Now this is for an AC 110 volt uh, pump. So there's no polarity, and it'll have terminals like this. Um, some of them have a resistor solder between the two um, connectors. No polarity, but if the resistor is there, that's a bleeder resistor. And basically when this is not in the circuit to help the pump get started, that resistor will bleed off any potential, any voltage that's on there. Um, so if there is a resistor between these two pins, you have to remove that resistor before you can measure it with your meter and then put it back when you're done if it's if it's good um, a lot of them don't have resistors across there this one does not so if that is the case what you're gonna want to do is you want to get yourself a, uh, a screwdriver and go across the terminals and short it out make sure there's no voltage there before you hook it up to your meter it'll be a little quick spark um, nothing dangerous It'll just um, make sure that there's no voltage on there before you hook it up to your meter. And like I say, there's uh, no polarity at all on these, so it doesn't matter which way you hook it up. So you would take your meter and just hook it across the each, each terminal. And this one is reading 138. Okay, 138 microfarads, and the and this one says that the range is 124 to 149 microfarads, so it's right in the range. So if you had a motor that wasn't working and you got this cap and you checked it, um, and it and it checked out like this one did, the capacitor is more than likely not your problem. You got some other issue. So lots of lots of different uses for the cap meter. Um, I use it mainly for electronic kit building and it's come in pretty handy a few times when it was hard to read some of the numbers on them. Um, like I say, it's a pretty nice unit. You can get them on Amazon. It's uh, General Instruments and it's the CAP 1500, the CAP 1500. And um, it's a nice uh, cap meter. So if you're in the market for one and you don't want to spend a lot of money, it's a pretty good value. So uh, until next time, this is The Radio Geek.